My name is Diana Palma of B4 STEM, and I am here today to introduce my lesson, What is the Smallest Thing You Can Measure? At B4 STEM, we create ways to introduce early learners to the science of the small and careers in science, technology, engineering, and math for their futures as researchers, technicians, and tradesmen. In this lesson, they will investigate similar objects of various sizes and compare how their properties change based on their size. This may also be paired with the book, How Small is a Pygmy Shrew? So let's go ahead and get started. Alligator clip forceps, which in all my lessons we also use as robotic arms. And the magnifying glass, which works as our simplest microscope. And in this particular lesson, there is a container with lots of different size balls, another magnetic wand, and a test tube with a tight fitting lid that has lots and lots of tiny things in it. That we might be able to manipulate with the magnetic wand. So let's see everything we have in here. We'll get them all emptied out. I usually try to have about 20 things in the container. But the students enjoy just looking around, predicting what might be the smallest thing before you ever empty it. So let's see what we have in this one today. We can use two kinds of forceps. These move the tinier things around really well. And the younger hands might find it easier to move with the alligator forceps. So whichever ones, it's nice if you can have both. But you might want to just roll them around, count them at first, look at all the different sizes, shapes, textures, colors. These are all the things that we're always trying to get students to observe and discuss with us. So if we decide to line these up, smallest to largest, we might want to um, do it several times and let everybody have a chance. But as you can see, you're going to have lots of interest and lots of conversation about what's the smallest thing. We can't touch them, so we have to observe what the properties. Scientists always use tools in their hands, and that makes it what seems like harder, but it's also for safety but it's for learning how to work like a scientist. Make sure you think with your head and your eyes when you can't touch with your hands. So let's look at all these things. And maybe one of the first questions you might want to ask, there's so many ways to do this, is are any of them metal? Are any of them magnetic? So let's run our hand over all of them with a magnetic one. Oh, we do have a metal ball. That seems to be magnetic. Is anything else going to be magnetic? Oh, wow! That bell makes a pretty good magnet. Yes, it does. If you have, and then you line it up, and if everybody agrees that this one is the smallest thing, well, let's measure them all. Let's see. And of course, we're going to use our handy dandy nanometer ruler. That's what we always try to use. One nanometer is a billionth of a meter. And so we can measure this very smallest one and it's probably going to be, everybody I imagine will agree, between one and two millimeters. Is that the smallest thing that we have in our lives? Well, I don't know because, hmm, let's look at the things we have in our test tube. They might even be smaller than that. I wonder if they are. Oh my goodness. As you look down the side of this, what we actually have in here are some water jewels and glitter. And those might even be smaller. I wonder if we could measure those. Well, we probably could if we could get one separated. Those look like they're about one millimeter. So that might be tinier, but of course the individual pieces of glitter show up and they're surely smaller than one millimeter. Well, how small can things be? That's always the question that we're trying to solve. So today, 
This lesson is really about extending, observing properties. How many properties can you name? How many properties can you separate? And then we can tell if things have different mass by measuring them in a balance scale. So if there's nothing on either side, you're going to see that it measures right here on the arrows that meet. If you put something that weighs the same on either side, they're going to come back to balance in the center. And then we could start manipulating. Okay, if we put this one, which seemed to be pretty heavy, on one side, that might be the one with the greatest mass, would be one way to say it. Would it be possible for us to combine some of the other things to put in there to equal that? Hmm. How about the other thing that seemed to be metallic? Nope, that doesn't do it. If we put all the rest of these things in here, do you think they're even going to be able to pull it? I don't know. We'll have to try. And so that's how you'd continue. Oh, this is a marble. put all these other things in there. Wow, it doesn't look like it's going to balance, so it looks like one of these, even though it wasn't the largest, is going to be the thing that ends up having the greatest mass, or pulling that side of the scale down compared to everything else. But you can try this with all different sizes, and have many different opportunities to extend, and then you can even measure volume by placing water in either side. So that would be fun. And then comparing two that look like they might have the same mass and put them in water and see what happens. Will they sink or float? Will they have buoyancy? There are so many questions. It's endless. So I hope you have fun with this. All my lessons appear on the Teacher Pay Teacher site and on my website, beforestemink.com. I look forward to helping you in any way I can. Thank you.